Well, hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to episode 96. That's this many. That's like nine. And, and, a, and, a, and a six. Yeah, like that. And of the hell mean power hour, right? So I'm Duder number one, Rick. And with me as always, my counterpart, my hero, Danny Bennett. Oh my God. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a lot to unpack. I can be your hero though. And, and I will, um, I will let you know what's going on here. I am Danny Bennett. We are here with the Hail Ming Power Hour to talk about another movie that you should check out. <laughs> and uh, we are, we are privileged to bring you another special guest this time. And uh, that's right, it's the witch, right? Our from brother from witch down from under, witch man. The clock. The witch is here. My brothers from Fruit Based Mothers. I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> it's great to be here. And, and I just need to say that fate wants me to find a smart toilet. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it's it's been a while. Of course, you know, we kind of got the hell mean juices flowing again. We kind of got that going on. And, uh, you know, we started talking about having guests on and immediately we were like, man, we got to get the witch to come back on. It's just he, he's he's that third wheel for us. So always <laughs> awesome. The one off the side. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, it gets us down the road. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just, just off to the left a little. <laughs> Have we got a movie for y'all this time, man? Uh, I kind of, I kind of picked this one and forced these guys to watch it, and I'm anxious to see what they think about it. But it is the brand new Bullet Train. It's got Brad Pitt in it, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. I love this movie. <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, the best way I can describe this, uh, if you folks haven't checked it out, I mean, I think by the end of this, you'll, you'll kind of decide what you want to do. But what I like about this movie is it's it's everything I like about Tarantino, but without all the stuff that I don't like about Tarantino at the same time. Does that make sense? That's, that's an right interesting on. take. It's an interesting thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's got that quirkiness. It's got that fun thing that he does, but he kind of takes, it kind of takes that drab out of it where you're just kind of sitting there going, where's this going? Right. And this thing just, man, it seems like every 20 seconds you're, you're being introduced to another person and an, another backstory. And I, I don't know. I kind of love it. It's everything I like about mean guns. Well, and, and I think, you know, with that being said, we should, we should definitely point out that, you know, at this moment, Albert Pune. Yes. Of, of, of the, you know, uh, the director of Mean Guns and, and the Sword and the Sorcerer and yeah. uh, Captain America, which, you know, yeah. well, was what it was. <laughs> is, uh, it, I, I'm not sure what his story is exactly, but I've seen several, you know, Helming fans uh, pointing out that he's not doing well. And, you know, we, if, this gets to him you know I, I know that i have in several cases looked up movies that i really enjoyed just to find out he was behind the wheel yep I, I didn't know i didn't go to him because they were him but i went to him and said what a great movie and it turned out he was involved you know and brain smasher a love story who which you know <laughs> nobody ever brings up but it's it's, it's a favorite of mine Brings I, I, my eye every time <laughs> again i watched it and i was like oh this is a crazy ass movie it was Albert Pugh. It, <laughs> it made so much sense when I found that out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah Terry Hatcher, Andrew Dice Clay. What's Ninja. not to love? <laughs> Vice is getting punched in. It's it's everything. It's, everything. <laughs> it's no Ford Fairlane. Well, you can talk few things off. Oh, <laughs> it's better uh, for it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Ricky, you said Tarantino. I'm yeah. going to throw in another name, Guy Ritchie. Absolutely. Yeah. This, yeah. this is like, it's like all the good bits of Guy Ritchie, all the good bits of Tarantino, a little bit of Deadpool shoved in the middle of it. Absolutely. And yeah. you're having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, again, that's the stuff I like. I like the quirky, every 20 seconds you're going, I don't know what's happening here. And then... <laughs> <laughs> you know, telling kind of the story out of, out of sync and all that stuff. I mean, it's all those things that, you know, we're, we're used to now, but mm -hmm. I just, I just think this movie is really, really clever, man. I mean, 
the the whole setup from the beginning where you've got the, the, the kid in the hospital that's been shoved off the top of a building <laughs> just to get this guy to get on the bullet train and track down the person that's responsible for it. I mean, that's what, what else of a setup do you need? I, I, you know, I, to be honest, I don't know that I was, I was engaged in the movie like completely until they were about to pull up to the final stop. And outside the bullet train is a is a whole bunch of goons with different melee weapons. Right. I'm just like, okay, I'm there. I, <laughs> up until now, I've been kind of kind of rolling with it. It wasn't badly done, and I think that this kind of movie was made was made pretty frequently, you know, several years ago. And they kind of took a break, you know, like like uh, Aces and and you know and and uh, uh, Mr. Right, and there are a lot of hitman movies that came out. Sure. And it kind of took a hiatus. And so this is kind of a return to form. And it's all really, really well done. You know, the music, there's a lot of really good music in it. You yeah, can it tell that, that they wanted to make sure that they had a, a lot of different music represented and, and and they had that that element to it. A lot of really stellar, you know, everything's really crisp, like like digital movies tend to be now. You know, the backstories are all really interesting and well done, kind of like music videos, you know. Um it's, it's not badly done. It just I I wasn't I wasn't all the way there until I realized that it was just a remake of The Hunted. <laughs> Actually, it's a book that came out in 2010 that this is based on. That Christopher Lambert was in, where he became <laughs> ninja, or he became a samurai so he could fight ninjas in a train. At, yeah, at a, there was an old dude. It's The Hunted. <laughs> and there was I give you that one. with the water bottle. I remember. Christopher oh. Lambert and the water bottle that was that right was very right. important <laughs> the, the, the life cycle of the water bottle or the story of the water bottle was really good yep. and, and the you water know, bottle. I, I remember thinking when I realized that, that there was a lot of similarities to the fight sequence in the train and the hunted that the hunted was a really bad movie <laughs> right and, uh, and, and it was <laughs> it, it, this and what this was was it was a lot of movies that I really liked done better done better exactly and that's why i bring up mean guns yeah. and because they're even doing the body counts right nope it was yeah. 16 nope I'm, I'm telling you it was 17 and they go back and replay you know i just I, I love that quirkiness about it and and come on man i try my best to hate brad pitt i just do because he looks at you with that look and his chiseled features but come on man He's freaking awesome. <laughs> I, I That's what I mean. I Guy Ritchie, Brad Pitt is the best. Yes, yes, yep. It's true. Well, he got Snatch, right? Like, yeah. is it Snatch that? Yeah, I watched yeah, that. Not, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not gonna go down. I'm, I'm, I've been bringing up a lot of exterior things because this movie reminded me of a lot of different movies. And sure. again, in a lot of cases, there were movies I liked, and it was just done better. But you know, it had Joey King in it, yep. the the queen of streaming, who like uh, yeah, she was in the princess and and uh, the kissing booth and all that other stuff. Of course, and her name her name in the movie is the prince. <laughs> True, it the had kick prince. ass in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I love the fact of you know, and of course the character she plays. Everybody is so pivotal in this in this film. Pivotal. 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 You could pick them up and you could turn them. You can be up. They wiggle and they wobble and they don't fall down, you know? <laughs> I see what you did there. Yes, yes, yes. That's what happens when I screw up. <laughs> I, I just, again, I was blown away by how is this all going to come together at the end, right? It'd be different if this was a TV series and you had time to, to lay it all out. It's true. But the but fact it was that it's a long movie, it's yeah, it's very long. It's as it's long like as like two hours. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, yeah. But it needed it. I mean, it, again, to flesh it all out. Uh, I'm just gonna say, as a prime example for anybody that's seen this movie, The Wolf. <laughs> I love oh. the I love the whole backstory of the wolf. You see him from a kid growing up, getting into the, the, the gangs and, and fighting, you know, the bad guys. And he meets a woman and he gets married. And you get all this when he opens the door to the bullet train to get on and he sees Brad Pitt standing there. You get this huge backstory where his whole family and his wife were all killed at their wedding by vomiting blood 
Well, pretty much blood coming out of every orifice. <laughs> Yeah. And then and then it just breaks into this fight between him and Brad Pitt and the dude dies like I don't know 2 minutes later. And it's just like wow. <laughs> we just built up this whole story for this to happen, you know. <laughs> well, and you know it it was very kill bill in that way. Like Yes. Yeah. I I, yeah. I felt like the, especially the the hornet, you know, and the yeah. whole po- poisoning assassin thing, it was very kill bill. Mm. And yep. Again, I mean, again, I like Kill Bill, but I I felt like this having a moment of Kill Bill in the middle of a different movie was almost better than watching the entirety of Kill. That's Bill. That's exactly what I mean by it's it's the good stuff of Tarantino, mm. but without all the other Tarantino. It's like, did we really need Kill Bill too? Without all the feet. <laughs> yeah, without all the feet. <laughs> it took me several years to watch Kill Bill too, but I kind of like Kill Bill too better than the first one when i finally did sit down and watch it yeah it maybe he's a video file you know he, right. he 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 wanted to do a lot of things yeah. and so he used it's a playground for him and we might not be playing the same game very true but anyways let's kick it to the witch man what do you what's your thoughts on this movie man Dude, this movie is it, it's it's kind of bonkers but i love it there's so much going on like even to the point that the the little prince is reading Shamubi. <laughs> Shamubi. Now, Shamubi. the weird thing is, Shamubi is being read by a guard at the start of the original John Wick movie. Yep. And Shamubi is all about a dude that has the naked way of killing, which is using everyday objects to kill people, which is what Brad Pitt does in this movie. Right. How about hey, what Just, what if there what if there was a John Wick link to this somehow? <gasps> <laughs> Google it, people. <laughs> Google. Get the Google in there. Oh, I'm but yeah, there's, like you said, there's so much going on. And those accents, those British accents are so full on. <laughs> oh, my God, Governor, <laughs> what's going on here? Oh, I don't want to be a tangerine. Oh, my God. Oh, man, lemon and tangerine. And, and Michael Shannon. <laughs> Michael Shannon, though. Michael Shannon as a Russian gangster. Right. <laughs> Showing up in the eleventh hour, no doubt. You know, like he's he's because because they they give so much of a tease to him that it's like when he shows up, who is he gonna be? Right. You know, like, yeah. Who are they gonna get for this guy? Because you know they're dropping all kinds of celebrities in this. And did I mean so? Maybe you guys didn't see the Lost City, which I did see. Mm-hmm. Um, but there. Are, so for Brad Pitt, Channing Tatum, and Sandra Bullock. <laughs> who are all in the lost city together right like when Mm. channing tatum shows up in this he's reading the book from the lost city (laughs) and then like brad pitt shows up basically being his character from the lost city and and they have kind of this similar relationship and then like when sandra bullock is uh is rescued by uh brad pitt in the lost city she's like are you here rescue me and it's the opposite at the end end of this this where you know he's freaking out and she comes in I, I thought, you know, ha- having watched that, you know, rom com, which was was very much romancing the stone, um, I, I, I was I was kind of glad to see that all uh, mentioned because I apparently they were filming that at the same time as they filmed this or something of that nature, which, oh. which must have been fun for them. Huh. Uh, you know, again, you can tell that they're pulling from so many sources, man. The, the, <laughs> the Channing Tatum. <laughs> Is this a is this a sex thing or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is is the sex thing now? Is, it, is this the sex thing? <laughs> is this is this the sex thing? And, and and don't forget Ryan Reynolds just oh yeah just very yeah, quickly yeah. yeah I'm Ryan I'm Ryan Reynolds thanks very much and I'm out and if that's not a Kevin if that's not a Kevin Smith thing right I mean because the whole time Brad Pitt's like I'm not even <laughs> supposed to be here you know <laughs> I'm supposed to be here today. <laughs> And the fact that it all falls back on Ryan Reynolds because he called in sick, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's uh, what, what about what about the is... White Death freaking out on that one? It's like yeah. you, you asked for a guy, and, and they're supposed to give you the guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I love the buildup of the of the White Death, right? Because. You know, he's going to the to the extent of getting all these people on this train together to kill each other. He buys all the tickets on the train so nobody can get on and get off that's not supposed to be there. And it all falls apart because of 
one thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. And to, so to to build him up to be this character, and then to see him fall apart like he does at the end. Uh, again, this movie's so full of twists and turns, man. I just I just had a blast with it, man. Uh, I, I love the whole yes. Thomas the Tank Engine. Uh, <laughs> references to everything. You're the diesel. You're the diesel. You're the diesel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what about and Mon Mongo? Yeah, Mon Mongo. Yeah. She kills that guy. Like, like she. Oh, okay. Well, then he kind of stabs him <laughs> in the neck and holds him there. And, it's, it's got a lot of great action in it, man. I just, I don't know. I, I, I was surprised at just how much I enjoyed it. I mean, because I think mm. I just sat back and just took it in. I was like, wow. You know, again, just constantly not knowing what's going to happen next. The, the whole thing of Brad Pitt thinking he has bad luck because everything he does, even if he doesn't even touch somebody, they die, you know. So he's got this whole curse thing going on, which, you know, then his his, his code name is Ladybug. <laughs> you know, just every... Ladybug. <laughs> yeah. I, I do I do really like the the whole reluctant hero thing he he throws where they guess like hmm. the ladybug holds the seven sorrows. I, I don't, <laughs> don't want to hold the seven sorrows. sorrows. Hold the seven sorrows. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of a Jack Burton esque kind of kind exactly. Of thing, so he's like yep. yeah. I mean, he's yeah. he's the anti-hero well i mean he's a hitman right he's there to do a job and of course uh uh, uh lemon calls him joe berg all the time right because he shot him in johannesburg <laughs> twice <laughs> twice 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 <laughs> twice <laughs> even the whole sequence with with the hornet where where he's fighting her yeah. and, and like she stabs him and he stabs her and then you know she pulls out the the antidote he gets it and then goes, have you got another one? And she's like, man. <laughs> it's like, you should always be prepared. I mean, for something like that. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm it to you. Do you need a glass of water? Should I hold your hand? Can you need me like, to hold your hand? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and and so the fact funny. that, and like at the beginning, right? In the hospital and the, 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 the kids in the, in the bed and you get the parent there and they turn on the TV and it shows the clip of the snake, right? The snake is missing from yeah. the zoo. And then it all ties into everything that's happening. I mean, it's just, I don't know, man. I was blown away by how they tied it all together. Uh, you know, I, and the first thing I thought of in the, in the whole Hornet sequence where, where she stabs him and then so he stabs her was, um, it made me think of Ninja Scroll. Yes, absolutely. Was, Dube yes. gets stabbed. And then he turns around and stabs Dakawa and Dakawa's like, oh no, no, that's, <clears> that's a different, I threw that one away. <laughs> Like it was a, it was it was quick, but it you know Jube wasn't quick enough. I I, I thought of that immediately though because yep. that's the only time I've ever seen somebody like pull that that same trick. Yeah, and and, just and having to work for Brad, which is another great thing about this. And I think this is kind of where we're all landing here. You don't really see anything really new in this, right? All the concepts are there. Are there? We've seen it before. Like you said, it's just probably better done. But to me, it was just kind of refreshing. I don't know if it's because I really like the cast. I think they did a good job of putting the right people in the right places. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, th I think that's what made it work for me. So I don't know. I just found it uh, refreshing. Did you find yeah, it refreshing? And, and, you know, like a refreshing <laughs> orange juice. Like a, um, like a Fuji, <laughs> Fuji water. Yeah, Fuji water. Don't drink too much. Um, but, and the thing was, it wasn't, too serious like it didn't take itself right. like super duper and you know like you didn't get to see like you didn't see a whole lot of heads getting blown off like there was blood but you didn't <laughs> see like people yeah. getting shot in the head and like bleh, everything else so and it all just kept going so you didn't sort of get tied down and oh that was hideous it was right. just running and everyone was everyone was very pretty it was very yeah pretty. yeah it was very pretty except brad pitt he looked like every homeless white guy that <laughs> isn't that what the what it uh, uh tangerine says you just look like every uh, american homeless guy i've ever seen <laughs> i mean here he is he's this hit guy and he's you know wearing his baggy pants and a pair of chucks and a gilligan hat you know <laughs> so, so i really liked a lot of the things it did 
if I had one criticism, it didn't need to be two hours long. The, yeah, it's a little whole, long. I mean, the, the, here's a spoiler. The bullet train hits another bullet train. Yeah. For no real good reason. It's like, oh, and we continue on past the final stop because we have a plan that isn't really a plan. And then the bullet train hits another bullet train. And it's kind of like speed. <laughs> Batman it's kind of like, like Batman Begins where there's like a whole train sequence that you don't need even though the whole thing's on a train it's like hey let's get on a train and, and have the train go further yeah. and it, it stops at a terminus that could be the end of the story and let's just keep going Yeah, I mean, they could have shaved a little more time off and I would have been perfectly happy with it <laughs> just, but, just, a, just a suggestion Yeah. did you watch the after credits thing I did not watch the after credits. Ah, I had ah. some I had some business at the bank that I had to take care of. <laughs> I had important stuff to do. I had to I go find like, a listen, smart listen, toilet. I'll take the bullet train straight to Money Town and take care of some financial business. <laughs> oh. oh. No, so that means you don't so, know Tangerine's <laughs> ultimate fight. Right, right. So you so remember Andrew? Andrew? Well, you remember. No, I should, should should we tell him? Should we tell him? Tell me. Tell him. So you know that uh White Death's daughter comes out with the gun, gonna shoot them at the end, truck full of tangerines hits her and kills her, right? Yes. So they go, Oh, it karma, that. right? It's karma. What happens is it shows ten minutes earlier when Lemon and that guy fall off the train and land in the water. There's a big battle there. He gets out, does his business there, stops a truck on the side of the road. It's the tangerine truck. He takes the truck, and he's the one that runs over at the end. So, so Kickass is still dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you said tangerine, and then then I thought maybe maybe he made it because no. you know I thought Lemon was dead, and then he wasn't. So you right. know. Right. Everybody confused out there? We're throwing names everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about fruit people. That's right. Fruit people. Just fruit. Not fruit. just fruit, fruit, but fruit people. people. No, but if you haven't Hold watched Bullet Train, that would be why you're why you're lost. But we recommend it. I mean it's, <laughs> it's got it's, nothing to do with us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Well, here's what I know is Becky normally doesn't, my wife, doesn't normally watch much stuff like this, and she loved it. She had fun with it. So I think that kind of gave it some credit, too, that you do get pulled into the story, and even though it throws you all these curveballs, you, curve you kind of want to stick with it and see what's going on at the end, right? So, yeah, I will agree. Of course, this is any action flick, right? We're going to take it yeah. further than it needs to go. We don't have anybody to drive the train anymore, so let's get the guy that watches Thomas the Tank Engine as a kid to be the guy that tries to turn the train on and run it. I mean, you could tell it's just goofy schlock, right? It, it's it's very it's it's a it's definitely a comedy. It's yep. an action comedy because there's there's a whole lot of real silliness that happens, and and I'm not against that. I just you know thought it was two hours long, man. <laughs> two hours long. <laughs> but I mean. Really though, most really? movies now are 145. That's yeah. pretty normal. <clears throat> uh, you know, you can make excuses all day long. I made my criticism. I ain't changing my course. I'm not, I'm not the bullet train on the wrong track here. I'm, I'm, I didn't yeah, say I we, didn't like it. All we needed was Sandra Bullock to jump on the bullet train at the end and say, you know, if it goes below. 500 miles an hour it's going to explode you know all we need was christopher yes. lambert to come on there and for somebody to like drop the the like the the door thing so that it doesn't open up so they give so a samurai could fight a bunch of ninjas on the on the bullet train which kind of happened yeah we're not far from that no yeah or what, godzilla could have crawled out of mount fuji and grabbed the bullet train and used it to fight king kong there you go you know, or we could just turn it off and watch Versus. Oh, Versus. <laughs> oh, we could watch Versus. Yeah. I, I, but, you know, it's it's a totally different thing. Bullet Train and Versus are both fantastic movies. Mm. And we're talking mm. about Bullet Train. So I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> I brought it up. 
not a, not a problem. You, you make a valid. Movies, it's, it's a valid movies. point. It's a valid point. We do need to do verses on here. Versus, is, yeah. or we could watch Battle Royal. That that's always fun. Ooh. Battle Royal is fun. It, it's more serious than the other ones. I'm gonna throw Old Boy in there. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, but hang on. <laughs> Are we watching like American Old Boy or like proper Old Boy? <laughs> proper. Yeah, we're not messing proper with that remake. I, I, crap. I'll be honest. I haven't watched the American version. I, I didn't feel like it needed to be made, so I haven't been in any rush. You remember when we watched Henry Two? Yeah, and we were like, "Eh, if we had not seen the first movie, Henry Two would probably been all right. If we yeah. hadn't seen the real Old Boy, the remake of Old Boy would probably been all right." Okay, but, but isn't it Spike Lee? Yeah, Spike Lee remade it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I have no problem with Spike Lee really, but I mean, yeah. I just don't think Old Boy needed to be remade. It, it was uh, kind of a masterpiece. Can't argue with that one bit. Yep, no, fully agree. Fully yeah, agree. that'll be our Christmas episode, Old Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Put some tinsel on your hammer, kids. Let's watch your boy. <laughs> Put some tinsel on your hammer. But if that ain't a catch line, I don't know what is. <laughs> it's a family favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the name of this episode. <laughs> Put some tinsel Put on some your hammer. Put some tinsel on your hammer. <laughs> is, that a, is that an Australian uh, uh, turn of phrase? time? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Every Christmas we put tinsel on a hammer and we go out into the yard and we fight the giant spiders for the Christmas tree. That, that's how you gather the Christmas tree in. I don't know if you're screwing with me. Exactly. <laughs> Note to self, not going to Australia for Christmas. I didn't know the Hall of Justice was in Australia, though. That's pretty awesome. Oh, uh, that's Isn't that's that, why no one can ever find it because it's in Australia. And you see, we're, in Nashville, where Danny lives, he's got the whole universe right there. So he has. He's got the whole world <laughs> in, in his hands. hands. That, that's just the Grand Ole Opry, y'all. <laughs> I thought that was Kid Rock's club. <laughs> no, if you look that bright spot right right over my shoulder, that's that's Winona. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Okay. You know what? Until you mentioned it, I th that's the Hall of Justice. I thought it was just the Sydney Opera House. Well, you know. It's the, same. <laughs> it's the, it's the backside of it. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, guys. Let's wrap this one up. I, I recommend this movie. I think if you like a good roll in the hay, Roar, roar, roll and say. I I think this movie is fun. Actually, it's probably my favorite Brad Pitt movie since Fight Club. I'm gonna throw that out there. I just really like this movie. So, Danny, what do you think? Well, you know, first you you're bringing up Terry Gar from Young Frankenstein, and then you talk about your favorite Brad Pitt movie. What knock us? Already established you don't like Brad Pitt. <laughs> Look, so. Bullet Train. It's a lot of fun. It's a hitman movie. Like you said, it's a Tarantino movie. It's a stylized movie. It's kind of in the vein of like, you know, I don't know, maybe Scott Pilgrim or something. Yeah. It doesn't have quite the, the, the effects of Edgar Wright, but it's close. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a little long. I mean, for, for like a party movie, I would think this would like get a group of people together to enjoy it, which I think I would have enjoyed it more if maybe we had all three been together watching it. Sure. Because it isn't one that you really have to sure. focus on, but it's definitely one that has a lot to to enjoy. And yeah, it's 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 worth watching. And I would say watch it with friends and make sure you got lots of time. But <laughs> I mean it's really time's an issue. It. Oh it's got kick ass in it, you know. I, yep. Man, big I love I love the way that they transition you from one scene to the other by passing down through the train. So like my favorite scene mm -hmm. is when Brad Pitt is flying through the air in slow motion and that pitcher hits him in the face. <laughs> and they're watching him fly by. I mean, <laughs> I just, it's fun, man. It, all right, it, which it, it's all you, man. What do you, what's your thoughts on this one? Well, I said it earlier. You got Tarantino, you got Guy Ritchie, you got Deadpool in the middle. You yeah. Just jam it all together and you laugh and laugh. And I uh, highly recommend this movie. Cannot watch it enough. I am going to go and read Shamubi. 
Okay. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I, and now that I know that it comes up, I'm, I'm going to have to watch. I'm going to have to read it too. And then I'll be able to kill people with household items. <laughs> that's exactly it. That, well, in Australia, that's how we teach our toddlers. Um, it's the old tinsel hammer trick. It is. They, they just get, they get, they get the Playmobil hammer, the little plastic one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we wrap it up, first of all, which, man, it's always awesome to have you around. It makes us just giggle. We have so much fun with you, man. It's always a blast. Are you working on anything recently, or you just kind of chilling? Uh, I'm working on the shine on the top of my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, no. I've, I've stepped back from podcasting. Um, I think the only thing I'm working on is probably my right hook. Right. And uh, get preparing for Christmas uh, to fight the spiders. All right. But Bigger anytime hammers. Anytime you guys call, I will come out of retirement just for you. Ah, that's fantastic. That's all I needed to hear. Well, you know, and, and that goes the other way. If you were to decide, you know, look, it's time to uh, to dust off the old microphone. I'm sure that that I speak for Rick. And I know I speak for me when I say that, that we'll jump right on too. Absolutely. Anytime. I might even <laughs> like put together a, uh, a a real fakey British accent for you, and you know, <laughs> hey, it's pineapple here. You know, no, I just... it's pineapple. Yeah, <laughs> it's kumquat. <laughs> Tinsel <That's> ammo. <laughs> Tinsel my oh, ammo. Yeah. It's Christmas and blood pudding for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, one more time, which man, thanks for hanging out with us. Always a blast folks, everybody out there. Hope you enjoyed this episode. It's episode 96. We're closing in on hundred. I have no idea what we're going to do. Probably something lackluster for a hundred. Uh, that's just, that's kind of how we do. think, right? We could do a, a whole Walton's retrospective. Ooh. Oh my God. My my heart it just started beating faster. <laughs> my, mine sw swallowed three times. I think I'm having a heart attack. Um, <laughs> mate, you could watch a very civil Christmas. So if oh, you anyway. like this episode, we're glad you did. If you don't like the next episode, it's probably because Danny's going to pick the next movie. So just let you know ahead of time. Corvette summer. Corvette summer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll watch it. I'll watch it again. Did you know Andy Potts is from Nashville? No. I just found it out. Well, how about that? Crazy, right? Yeah. Crazy. Folks. Crazy uh -oh. without you. All right. That's wow. kind of the words. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, there are words in there. I know it's crazy and you. That's the bit I know. <laughs> we, we rewrite stuff all the time. No, we don't. We are we are factual. We are factual, just like Jaws three. Let me push the button. <laughs> All right, Hail folks. Helming. All right, folks. We'll check you next time. Adios.